life even though he died. And everyone who has life has committed himself to me in faith, shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awakening, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord. And if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to life, grant that your servant Betsy, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. first reading is from Isaiah. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let's say in unison the psalm. God is our refuge and strength.
that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, or we shall see him as he is. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
So, I'm, believe it or not, a middle-aged adult now. Um, I know I don't look that way. Uh, supposedly, men go through midlife crisis. One of the things that happens during that time is you, well, you buy a fast car. Um, you dress like a teenager. Uh, you question what is the meaning, what is the purpose of you being here. I personally, I'll be completely honest with everyone here, I haven't gone through that yet. But, last week, as I was thinking about my mom, I was in the body shop waiting for my Porsche to be fixed. <laughs> Looking at my really dirty Converse shoes and going, what is the meaning of life? And it doesn't take many people like my mom to realize what that is. And it really is, will you leave this place a better place than it was when you came to it? And my mom scored a perfect 10 on that. Now, I've been coming to this church since I was tiny, 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 tiny. I sat back there with you guys. I probably didn't understand 99% of what was being said. But I went every week because my mom said. So I'm going to simplify that down for people like me, for the younger people in the, in the, in the parish right here. I view it as a suitcase. Everyone's got a suitcase, and within that suitcase are these little presents. And you can choose that when you interact with people, you can open up that suitcase and you can give them a present out of that suitcase. And, or you can choose not to. And Betsy, Petey, I'm all. <laughs> she had this ginormous suitcase for which every day she would dole out these presents. These presents of love. These presents of compassion. These presents of empathy. To every single person that she touched. This was a lady that had a true meaning of life for which, because of what she gave everyone here, because of what she gave, of all those little presents that she gave to all these people in the congregation, all the people that she touched. That's true meaning of life. So, the fourth and final thing is, and this was really corny when I wrote it, but I'm gonna say, my mom's suitcase is now closed. She is done passing out presents to everyone. Okay? Right? I need a little mental break. Now, it's about memories. And Patty or Linda, I was trying not to cry through all that, so <laughs> talking about memories. That's what, that's what my mom has left us, is memories. Those presents. Those things that we can take with us to make our lives and other people's lives better. So, when you think about these memories, think about them, think about my mom, put a smile on her face. That's what she would want. So Dr. and Mrs. Metz, <laughs> that orange juice concoction that you made, that my mom is, we were down here a couple weeks before, Mrs. Metz makes it, my mom's like, oh, I'm in heaven, I've already gone down, and this is the greatest thing ever. It's like, what are you putting in this? There can't be alcohol, because she doesn't really like to drink. But she was, she was just, she was the greatest thing ever. And then we come down here a couple weeks later, and my mom's drinking some more of this stuff. And I'm like, wow. So, Mrs. Metz, when you make that, you better be smiling. You better be going, this is what Betsy loved, and it's the memories. My dad and some really close friends of theirs are going down to, to Pismo to the to the jazz festival. It's something that they've done for a number of years. There were times when you guys go down and you're walking on the beach, you're listening to jazz. Smile. Just smile and remember. Remember my mom. Dave and Rochelle. So the infamous post-ranch trip that I took with <laughs> my parents and uh, another group of kids our age and my parents. So three three kids our age and then my parents go down for this little retreat. And someone has this great idea that we're going to do yoga. <laughs> so, I'm sure some of you are already gone there. Visualize my dad doing yoga. <laughs> so, 
So now visualize my dad and about three other people that are like my dad, very not yoga people. <laughs> and then there's my mom, who's very yoga, very flexible, very everything. So we go in there, someone decides we're going to go down there in the morning. So we go down there, and there's the eight of us, and then there's three other yoga people, and they're all serious, and they come in there. For 20 minutes, we're just laughing, because they're trying to get my dad on these pillows and trying to get him in some comfortable position because he can't touch his legs, to, can't touch his knees, his feet to his butt. We got, and we're just busting up laughing. And the three serious yoga people, they, they left 15 minutes ago. It just is like nonstop, just like almost peeing your pants laughing. To be, I don't know if I can say that. So finally, after 20 minutes, we're, we're still, we're finding our, our, our pace, we're deep breathing, we're, we're quiet. Last about 10 seconds. And then, these roosters, out of nowhere, just start doing their thing. And it's just, we lost it. And we just, it's done. So Dave and Rochelle, dad, when you hear a rooster, and you're not busting the gut because of how, of just the memory of just what that is, BB's gonna come down with a lightning bolt and strike you in the head. So, so in summary, every single one of us has that present, has that memory. BB's hope and her gift, BB is BB is what my kids call. Is what they call my mother. Uh, so, we all have this little present. Take that present. I don't need to say it. Happens anyways. Uh, take that present. Take that little gift. And just pay it for her. And remember her when you do. Because she said in one of her last emails that she sent people, don't cry for me. Go pick some flowers. Pay forward the love that people, you know, be loving, be gracious. Take some of those those attributes and and just take it with you with your lives, and that's ultimately what she would want. So, at the end of the day, remember those memories. Smile, and you know what? Even if you're smiling with your eyes, it can be done. So, thank you very much. Thanks for all for coming, and we'll talk to you later. and giant trees and all kinds of large holes in the ground. I love playing Farkle or any other card game for that matter. I love helping people. I finally realized why our Christmas gift was always getting to donate chickens. And now it's something that I enjoy getting to think about what would help most. I like taking pictures now because there are so many moments and experiences worth taking pictures of. I still do enjoy getting up early, though, so I guess you win some and you lose some. <laughs> I still try my best to keep 
I still try my best to set up the silverware in the right place, although I know at this point I think I'm going to get it right more based off of luck than actually remembering. <laughs> You've also taught me my love of California, because I really do love it here. You've taught me more things than I could possibly remember, and I know that some of the best parts of me are all these because of you. I just hope that I can take all that you've given me and make me proud, and make you proud in everything that I do. Love always and forever, right? Trust that. 
Abide in that. Live that trust. And let it take deep root in you. So that whatever comes your way, be it wonderful or tragic, whatever comes your way, it will not shake you too much. The first uh, psalm, Psalm 1, puts it like this. Be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You will bring forth fruit in due season, and your leaves will not wither. Betsy was planted in this living water and wanted that for each and every one of us as well. Wanted for us to celebrate and to delight in that living water. And that is, in fact, what a Christian burial service is all about. It's not just a memorial. It's a celebration. But it's not just a celebration of the life of the one who died. It's a celebration of God's living water, God's life, that courses through all creation, through the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, and over you and me, through us, and over which death has no final word. Even though, even though death itself, as uh, the first point that her son made, it sucks. Death itself is shocking and hard and cold. There are no platitudes that are equal to the grief of her husband or her children or her grandchildren or any of us. There is no covering up of the fact that it feels grievously wrong, that we cannot pick up the phone and call her and tell her how hard this is, that we can't have dinner with her, that we can't thrill to any new photographs, or plan new adventures, or holidays, or reap her quiet, down-to-earth wisdom, or have her sharp humor drive away a bad mood. Death is hard and cold and awful. And Betsy knew this. She didn't avoid that reality. But what she knew is that is a, that, that is only partial reality, only a piece of the puzzle of life. And that the whole puzzle, when it is put together by God's hand, the whole puzzle is beautiful and brilliant and glorious and good. And so, she was absolutely determined that this was to be a Christian service, meaning that resurrection was to be central, symbolized by the Paschal candle, this Paschal candle here that's front and center. That candle being the symbol of God's massive power of continual renewal of life in Christ, of life that overcomes death. That is our Easter candle. It is lit during the 40 days of Easter, and it is lit at the burial service of every Christian. God spoke blessing at the explosive beginning of creation. Let there be light, and there was light, and God called it good. In that same explosive power of creation, Jesus stood at Lazarus' grave and said, Come out, and Lazarus came out, and Jesus spoke blessing, unbind him. This power of creation, this power of blessing, this is the power that assured Betsy that her hope in God was trustworthy. And it's in that power that we are going to sing at the end of this service, at Betsy's command, so you know it's got to happen. <laughs> that we are going to sing, if you're happy and you know it. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. This is not the kind of happiness. We're not going to sing about the kind of happiness that comes when your spouse brings you flowers, or you get a raise, or you get an A on your test. This is the kind of happiness that arises because you are planted in living water and are living in God's reality, as Betsy 
was when she was here with us and as she is now in God's presence. Amen. Amen. Father of all, we pray to you for Betsy and for all those whom we love but see no longer. Grant to them eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. May her soul and the souls of all the departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you.
and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine, and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast in the banquet prepared for the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father,
there is a station in the very back outside. If the people in the back of the church would like to go outside to receive communion, you're welcome to do that.
join me on the prayer found on page 13. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the your great love. You have fed us with spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us a gorgeous spirit and a banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort and affliction, and a pledge to our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crime.